call it something different, Muslims, Christians, Judaism, whatever, but it all comes from one source. These are some, it is many references in the Old and New Testament about how prophets of God fasted. If you was to look up the word fasting in the Bible, it's in there several times in the Old and New Testament. But the few verses that I'm going to read to you all comes from the New Testament because I don't want no one saying, oh, brother, that's from the Old Testament and we don't follow that anymore. We're under the new law. Well, I'm going to give you the new law. All the things about fasting to show you this isn't just a Muslim thing is from the New Testament. Luke 18 verse 12 that's the New Testament um I fast two times a week I give tithes to all that I get that's in Luke chapter 18 verse 12 again Luke chapter 2 verse 37 in the New Testament and then and then it was a widow until she was 84 she did not depart from the temple worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day that's in Luke chapter 2 verse 37 in Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 in the New Testament so no one can't say that's the Old Testament and when you go to fast do not look gloomy like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen of others truly I say unto you they have received their reward. So basically what I get out of that is do your fasting for the sake of God and don't do it boastfully out in the public. Because if you do it out in the public, you've already gotten your reward. Where if you do it in a humble way, in secret, you will get a more a plentiful reward or more bountiful reward from God. Again, and when they fast, do not look gloomy on their faces like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces that they're fasting and may be seen of others truly I say unto you they have received their reward so do it in a humble way don't boast that you're fasting one more Matthew chapter 4 verse 2 says after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry there they're talking about Jesus because Jesus fasted in an attempt to discipline himself uh, to uh, fight off the temptation from the devil again Jesus fasted it was a, a part of his uh, ritual as a Jew because he was following the religion of Judaism Jesus was and to fight off temptation from the devil he fasted so fasting is prescribed for us for those who believe to Get us closer to the Most High. Give us discipline, right? And to show reverence and thankfulness to him. And this came way before Islam. So when Ramadan comes around, which God willing, it starts tomorrow, it isn't just for Muslims. This came way before. Remember, if you look at the faiths, it, Judaism came first, Christianity, then Islam. That's why it's important to know timeline and history, not just what religion, any history that you're studying. It's good to understand a timeline because someone who has a devious mind can deceive you. A lot of people think that uh, Islam is old as Methuselah. No, it's the baby of all three religions. So how can someone just say y'all are fasting? What, what do you mean? Judaism, Ju uh, uh, Moses followed Judaism. Jesus came after him. He followed Judaism, right? And, and then Christianity. So you got Judaism, Christianity, Islam. The Bible, I just gave you, it's several verses in the Bible that talks about the benefits of fasting and how almost all the prophets, if not all of them, fasted at some point. So this isn't just a Muslim thing. Who shouldn't fast? I can't tell you what to do. I'm just telling you how sacred this month is to us and what we do and why we do it. Again, from sunup to sudden down, no food, no water, no sexual activity, no cussing, no fighting, no arguing, strictly forbidden, right? But it's to cleanse yourself. So who shouldn't fast? Well, if you're free from sin, don't have any faults, don't need to improve anything, 
right, and you are sitting on the right hand of God, then you don't need to fast. I'll repeat that. Who shouldn't fast? Because remember, it's to develop self-restraint and for you to get closer to the Most High. If you are free from sin, don't make any mistakes, don't need to improve anything, and you are sitting literally at the right hand of God, then there's no need for you to fast. Don't even think about it. Unfortunately for me, I am nowhere near in that class. I have faults. I have things I need to improve on. And I certainly ain't sitting at the right hand of God. And I, and I need to get my life together. Okay? So I will do the spiritual fast because I can't actually do the physical fast. The physical fast is what I just said, abstaining from food, water, and sexual activity during daylight hours for a whole month. I can't do that because I'm diabetic, but I can do the spiritual fast. And the spiritual fast a lot of times holds more water than a physical fast because some people get caught up on the physical fast. I fasted today. I didn't eat nothing all day. I didn't drink nothing all day. Well, good brother, good sister. But were you kind? Did you help someone in need? Did you smile? Did your light shine to someone? What good is you abstaining from food and water when you're acting like Satan all day? See? What good is that? So a lot of Muslims get caught up on the physical fast, but don't work on the spiritual fast. You gotta put them together. And just try it sometimes. The fast, again, it is so many uh, um, benefits, physical benefits to fasting. Even when you go to get blood work, what do they tell you? Come on, talk to me now. What do they tell you? Fast before coming to get your blood work. Because we want to get the best reading we can to see what's going on in your blood. Blood pumps all throughout your body. They tell you to fast. And again, this isn't a Muslim thing. It, the word fast is in the Bible, Old and New Testament. All the prophets practiced it, if you believe in them. And Jesus most certainly practiced fasting. He fasted to fight off temptation from the devil. So this isn't a Muslim thing. We got to get away from that. The way y'all pray. Do you know in the Bible it talks about how the different prophets prostrated their head onto the floor to make prayer? So when y'all see us saying Allah Hu Akbar, which means Allah is the greatest, and we prostrate, it's right there in the Bible. Many things that we do, it's right there. But Satan has caused a division amongst us. So we look at the small differences amongst us and make them big differences. Don't that sound familiar? When did Satan do that in history? The Willie Lynch letter. What did Willie Lynch say? He said, I will make small differences, big differences. Their nose, their hair, the color of their skin. And they'll get so caught up with that that they won't concentrate on the real enemy. Little off topic bit. You know how I do. I'm not afraid to speak the truth. Yes, I'm Muslim, but yes, I'm black conscious too. Why? Why do I talk that black stuff? Because I'm black. Because I'm black. But anyway, back on Ramadan. Back on Ramadan. This is a blessed month for us. So, again, the spiritual fast is more important than, I believe, than the physical fast. Not what I believe, but what scripture tells us, but I'm not getting into all that. But anyone well-versed will tell you that God is not concerned with the physical fast if you want to be evil at heart at the same time. You must work on the spiritual and the internal. Then that will fulfill and even illuminate your physical fast. But it's so many benefits to it. It's so many benefits to uh, fasting. And we all get it from the, the book of the Muslims, which is the Holy Quran. That's where we get this from. We just don't make it up, you know, on our own. And in the Quran, it tells us it's a prescription. It's a prescription, like a doctor prescribes you something to heal you. This is a healing time uh, for us to work on our faults, our shortcomings, 
to reverence God, to thank him and to show him how much we love him and we worship him and put him first because he asked us to do this. But he don't need it from us. He, if we don't fast not one day, it doesn't do anything to uh, take God to another level and it certainly don't take nothing away from us. This is for us. I'm going to say it again. Fasting in any form of worship in Islam, the religion that Muslims follow, it's not going to take God to another level if we do or don't do it. And it's not certainly not going to take anything from him. It is for us to take us to another level level and again I can't do the physical fast because of my medical condition but it's other things I can do I've already started doing them being more charitable being kind keeping a low voice and keeping the peace and I've already been working on helping someone in need that is in replacement for me not being able to do the physical fast. It's always ways to win God's favor. He makes that. He's not going to set us up to fail. So this is the Hour of Power with Brother Sharif. Go to Hour of Power Sharif Hamid on YouTube. Subscribe and share the channel so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. So again, tomorrow starts, God willing, uh, they go off the sighting of the moon, um, the holy month of Ramadan. And for those who may just be chiming in, again, from sun up to sundown, we abstain from food and drink and sexual activity. But more importantly is we uh, restoring our spiritual life. Staying away from arguing and bickering and negative talk and getting ourselves right increasing our prayers, increasing our reading, reading a part of the Quran every day. So by the time the month is up, we've read all 114 chapters of the Quran and the Arabic word for that is surah. Surah means chapter. It's 114 surahs or chapters in the Quran. So hopefully we will have read that, um, you know, during, you know, that month. Um, it's a lot going on right now in the world we all need a healing, whatever your spiritual belief is. This isn't a time where we're saying, hey, look what we're doing and trying to make you feel guilty if you're not a Muslim. This is just what we do. We, this is what we believe. And like I said, it's came before us. This was done before us in the Bible, if you believe in the Bible. And if you believe in the prophets that came before Muhammad, they practice fasting. It's all throughout there. Just Google that word and it'll tell you Old and New Testament. And it'll show you how they practice fasting to increase their spirituality. And these were men supposedly, depending on your belief, that was directly inspired by God. And they fasted. So what were they fasting for? Right? So I thank those who have tuned in. Um, and to all my Muslim brothers and sisters around the world, I wish you a blessed Ramadan that God makes it easy for you because it's not easy to fast for 15, 12 to 15 hours out the day, especially if you're working. And that's another thing. I mean, I could be here all night. God doesn't want you to just sleep the day away. So you're just sleeping to get the fast over with, continue. He wants you to continue with your daily activity, but that's not an easy task. What if you're a construction worker? What if you work outside and you're not eating or drinking for 12 to 15 hours? Not an easy task, not an easy task, but the more struggle you have, the more blessings that you will get. So I pray that all my Muslim brothers and sisters or whoever that is observing this month, that God makes it easy for you. And we believe that the gates of hell are closed during this month because it's such a blessed time of the year and blessed time, uh, you know, for those who are striving to get closer to the Most High. But even if you don't fast, at least look into it. See if what your brother was telling you was accurate and you'll find more things that we do. I just didn't want to make this a straight religion class and bore you with a whole bunch